Welcome again. Right now we're at Luke chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. We're talking about the exorcism of a fortune teller, Paul and Silas jailed and later released. As we were going to prayer, notice the word we here. This signifies that it wasn't just Paul and Silas, it was the author of the book of Acts, Luke. As we were going to prayer, a certain girl having a spirit of divination met us. When it's talking about a spirit of divination, just to make it clear, it's talking about a real spirit, not just an attitude, not just a personality trait, but a real spirit who brought her masters much gain by fortune telling. Now today, you know, you got these psychic fairs and such. Now these fairs are filled with fortune tellers. And if these fortune tellers are anything like this girl, they would have evil spirits. Verse 17, following Paul and us, Silas and Luke that is, she cried out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Let's spend a moment thinking about this. What did this evil spirit say? These men are servants of the most high God. Well, that's true. They are who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Well, that's true too. So you might say, well, what's wrong with that? And how do you know it was an evil spirit? Well, let's read on. Verse 18, she was doing this for many days. So it was annoying, okay? So there can be people that say the right things, okay? They've got all of the right words, but they are annoying. That's the first clue. Let's continue. But Paul, becoming greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. It came out that very hour. Now, when it says in that very hour, it's not talking about literally a 60 minute hour. Okay. That very hour simply means at that very moment. Verse 19. But when her master saw that the hope of their gain, money, was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. Well, look at these people cost us money. When they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, or the judges, they said, these men being Jews are agitating our city. You see how these people are? They accuse the people of God of doing something that they themselves are guilty of. That's like today, how people say, well, so-and-so is a hater. Oh, so-and-so is hate speech. Well, that very person being a hypocrite is the one who's doing hate speech against the people of God. That very person is the one who's hating on God, hating on the people of God, hating on preachers, hating on those who preach righteousness, okay? Such hypocrisy, such double standard. Just like how this woman was very agitating, but yet when the spirit, when the evil spirit was cast out of her, you know, her bosses were saying, well, these guys are the ones that are agitating us. Okay, see how they turn it around, talk about hypocrisy. They're the ones that are guilty of agitating. So when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men being Jews are agitating our city and advocate customs, which is not lawful for us to accept or to observe being Romans. Why would they say that? Why would they say that Paul and Silas and Luke are advocating customs? Because they are advocating customs. Remember the last session where it says that Paul was preaching the decrees that were issued at Jerusalem? The decrees being the laws that were brought down in Acts chapter 15. The laws that are required for Gentiles to observe in order to be saved. Verse 22, the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore their clothes from them, then commanded them to be beaten with rods. So when someone tears their clothes, that's a sign of protest. That's a sign of disgust. That's a sign of being very grieved. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. They were beaten severely. 
But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, you know, that's not something that's very acceptable in prison, you know, is people singing. You know, it's like the rest of the inmates would be somewhat offended at that. I mean, you don't sing in a prison. But Paul and Silas were singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were loosed. Remember, Paul and Silas were put in stocks. I mean like shackles around their feet, okay? So it wasn't just the building shaken and the doors opening up just like that. But it was actually stocks and shackles falling off of people's feet. The jailer, being roused out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. He called for lights, sprang in, fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Powerful, powerful demonstration of God. Powerful, supernatural, fearsome experiences. That is what we need to be praying for today. Because people need to fall down at the feet of those who preach the truth and say the same thing. What must we do to be saved? Verse 31, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of God to him and to all those who were in his house. I think it's important to say here that in context, especially in the cultural context of what we're reading here, to believe in Yeshua is to believe in a rabbi. Remember, they called Yeshua the rabbi. They called Jesus rabbi many, many times. And indeed, he was a rabbi. Now, go and ask a Jewish person what it means to believe, to really believe in a rabbi. It doesn't mean just some kind of mental ascension that the rabbi actually existed, but it means to actually obey that rabbi. You can't say you believe in a rabbi if you don't actually obey that rabbi. He, talking about the jailer, took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, the stripes being the opened wounds that they had on their bodies from the beating, and was immediately baptized, he and all his household. That's salvation now. He brought them up into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly with all his household, having believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. The jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, come out and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly without a trial, men who are Romans, and have cast us into prison. Do they now release us secretly? No. Most certainly, but let them come themselves and bring us out. The sergeants reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans, and they came and begged them. When they had brought them out, they asked them to depart from the city. They went out of the prison and entered into Lydia's house. When they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them, then departed. Now, the next chapter is Acts chapter 17. There is an awesome nugget of what I would call spiritual gold in Acts chapter 17. Don't miss it. It is going to be awesome. Seek him with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.